Okay, so we're picking up where we left off with the Heliox. We talked about using the Heliox with a Nebu mask, which is basically a non-rebreather uh, incorporating a nebulizer as well. But we're, we're talking today about setting up the Heliox with uh, non-invasive ventilation. So in this situation, we're using the V60, uh, but you can also use it with the Vision as well. So we already went over setup of the Heliox itself with the tank. I've already connected the oxygen and the Heliox so that we have our blender. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it here at 80-20. So when it's at 20, it's 80-20 because this is an 80-20 uh, blender, okay? And briefly what we're gonna talk about is why you would use it with non-invasive ventilation versus the non-rebreather or the Nebu mask. So remember we talked about Heliox used for increased air resistance, right? So it's a less dense gas, uh, it's better laminar flow. Uh, so it helps the patients breathe in and exhale out when, they're, when they have restriction. So we're thinking of like asthma exacerbations, we're um, upper airway obstructions and stuff like that. So what we've typically used the non-invasive ventilation for is for increased work of breathing. And as some of you recall working in the ER, you see these patients come in they have upper air obstructions, they have COPD, they have asthma, but not only do they have the restrictive, um, restrictive disease affecting them, they also have an increased work of breathing, breathing in the 30s, breathing in the 40s. Now, the overall uh, result we're trying to accomplish here is not intubating these patients. So we're gonna do what we can, as much as we can, to prevent that from happening because that increases length of stay and increases the days that they're gonna be on the ventilator and in the hospital. Also makes them more prone to getting infections. So we have our V60. <clears throat> I'm gonna set the V60 up on the Heliox. So I'm gonna use my oxygen connector. And you see this port Okay, and I just want to show you, you have a flow meter that comes off the side, but you can unscrew that so you have the 50 PSI connection. And that's mainly for use with non-invasive ventilation or even mechanical ventilation so you can tie in the Heliox, okay? So that's what that's for. We still have our flow meter on the right side, which is for the Nebu mask or for, you know, if you're administering a treatment uh, by itself, that's what that's for. So we tied in the V60. I'm gonna go ahead and start my ventilation on the V60. Okay, now that we have breasts on the V60, let me just set my alarms. Okay, so <clears throat> now that we have breasts on the V60, we're gonna talk about what you have to set on your V60 or your vision and what is going to, what is going to be accurate versus what is not going to be accurate. So the thing you need to remember is we have to set the oxygen to 100% because the machine doesn't know any better. When you set it on 100%, the machine is saying, all of my air slash oxygen source is coming from my green line or my oxygen connection, 50 PSI connection. So you wanna deliver exactly what's coming from the blender, not what's coming from the wall, not what's actually on the bypass. So even though it says 100%, really all you're saying is, I want everything to come from this line, which in this situation we have at 80-20, okay? So that's 100%. <laughs> the other thing you gotta remember, when we use Heliox on non-invasive ventilation or V60 and, and uh, vision, our pressures and our volumes are going to decrease in comparison to our standard volumes, our standard minute ventilation, you'll see up here, our volume right now is reading only 48 mLs, minute ventilation is 0.6. Now, this isn't 
totally accurate because we are using a fake lung. We're using the plastic lung. But I will say that in experience with using this on patients, your, your volumes and your minute ventilation will decrease at about half. So if your patient was previously getting a tidal volume of 500 and getting a minute ventilation of let's say 10 to 12 liters a minute, I'm not saying they're not getting that volume because they are, it's just the machine doesn't have the software to read, oh, I'm using Heliox gas. It's less dense. They're still getting the pressure, they're still getting the minute ventilation, but you don't want to document these volumes in, the, in this minute ventilation because it's not totally accurate. What you are delivering to the patient is you're delivering heliox therapy for uh, increased airway resistance, and you're delivering added pressure to decrease that, uh, that respiratory work of breathing, okay? Um, the last thing that I'll say with this is because BiPAP has, it has a constant leak. It's not like mechanical ventilation. That constant leak or excessive leak uh, will cause your tank to last a very short period of time. So rough estimates, because it all has to do with respiratory rate, it has to do with volumes, I can't give you a precise number, but roughly if your patient's breathing in the 30s and they're um, you're taking a pretty good volume, your tank could last about an hour in each tank. Okay, so th those are things to remember. You gotta make sure that you have a backup tank available and uh, you have some help setting that up. Yes, and that concludes our, our talk today.